Hello everyone. So in the last episode, um, I finished off creating this topology and we're going to go ahead and turn it into a mesh and then fix the mesh topology a little bit more. But the only thing I did between episodes is I created this hand and I didn't want to do that. I didn't want it to do that on camera because while the structure is quite simple, it takes a lot of really fiddling around to get the perfect topology. Uh, for example, you can see if I move this, the topology changes on the right hand side. So I didn't want to make you sit through all of that, so I just did it. The only real key here is that you have to make sure that this is marked loose, otherwise your hand will look really dumb. Now with that completed, let's go ahead and just apply all of these modifiers, and now we've got a mesh. Huzzah! Uh, so let's go ahead and fix all the places where the mesh was bad before. And the biggest spot where that was true is definitely down here in the hips. So let's go ahead and grab these. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the x-axis mirror, which means that I don't have to select both sides and use scaling. I can just select one side and use grabbing. Like so. But while this looks decent enough when we're looking at it like this, this is actually not a very good um, crotch for a spacesuit. Uh, it's an extremely streamlined crotch. We need, a, we, need, we need something that looks like it's a spacesuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a loop. Now we could add a loop here. You can see how that runs through like a billion pieces of, of the rest of the mesh, including across the thumb and down the primary index finger. So that's a bad way. That's a bad place to add a loop. If we add a loop here, however, it actually is a good loop. It adds all of the uh, complexity that we're going to need in the upper chest for later. So let's go ahead and add a loop there. And that means that we're going to pull this loop forward. So let's go ahead and just grab it and pull it forward, like so. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same with these to a lesser extent. But it also means that we're going to be actually reducing the um, aggression here, because that's going to happen in this middle, middle cut. So just adjust all these pieces. There we go. Now we have a lot of options if we want to try and smooth that out a little bit more, but I'm okay with it because we're going to need to add some more detail down there uh, in the long run anyway, and so it doesn't have to be very perfect. I'm going to go ahead and move this down. There we are. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but we do want it to look decent enough. So there's a lot of other places where we need to fix the mesh, but one of the other ones that we need to do is here in the chest. But we can't see the chest very clearly. As you can see, it kind of blurs in with the backpack. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hide the backpack. Just select it all using a box select. Oh, do I not have it on again? Oh, sorry. There. So I selected it all using a box select, and I hit H for hide. There you go. And that means that we can clearly see the chest and where it's not lining up. So let's go ahead and grab all of these things and make it so that she has a little bit of bulk to her. We don't need her to look... Uh, the spacesuit shouldn't look terribly skinny. Um, not unless you're from the 50s. Here we uh, face a little bit of a dilemma. We should really be using the connected uh, move brush, but that actually breaks the X mirror, so um, we're not going to. Uh, we'll go ahead and polish this part up a little bit more later, but for now we're just going to do small adjustments and keep our eye on not changing which pieces of the topology fall where relative to other pieces. There. How does that look? That looks okay. This is a little bit overly dense, but that means that we can add in some cool details, something like a van brace for the shoulder. So I'm kind of looking forward to that, actually. And then we're going to unhide. Is it Control H? No. Nope. Alt H. There it is. So the next big thing is obviously the backpack, which is just completely wrong. But it exists. <laughs> and that's the important part. Um, so let's just go ahead and get the shape right first off. Um, we actually have a lot of options here because although I created the whole backpack, I don't actually want the whole backpack uh, now that I'm looking at it. I actually want all of this stuff to be 
here. Oh, I'm hungry. What is that? Oh, I see. What? What's going on? Why did it break X axis to X axis mirroring? I'm not ever sure exactly what breaks x-axis mirroring and what doesn't. So you have to keep your eye open. Um, it's not really intended to be used. <laughs> uh, but what we're doing is we're reducing this down to the core frame. And then what we will do is we will um, actually extrude out all of this complicated stuff. trying to select points that are only on the same side. I guess I could just select all the points. So I'm just trying to build an interesting structure for the backpack. And where it really comes in is down here, where we have to actually make it an, a concave mesh. So let's go ahead and grab the center and drag it in separately, like so. But you can see that we have a very gentle slope here, so let's go ahead and grab this and just drag it up. And that'll give us a much sharper inward turn. Uh, and then we can drag this up, like so. And then we can take this piece and actually that's about right so let's go ahead and put a loop cut here and then we can start to do some uh, extruding we'll just leave it like that for now yeah that's fine but you can see that we only extrude out of one side because we don't have a uh, topology mirroring turned on I'm not actually sure whether topology mirroring even works it's probably better to uh, do it manually. And then you can see that that works fine. And then we're just going to scale so that uh, it doesn't hit doesn't hit the hips too badly. There we go. Pull it back yeah, like that. All right. So with that done, we're going to go ahead and extrude here. Come on. Let's go ahead and just switch over to face mode. That'll make it a little easier. Extrude here, like this. And then we're going to extrude here as two separate cylinders. Uh, just how about one? And you can see that these cylinders ended up overlapping in a ridiculous fashion. But that's OK, because we can easily fix them up like this. Now, these aren't really cylindery cylinders, are they? Well, we can deal with that later. Right now, we just need to have them exist. Um, they're a little bit too big, so let's go ahead and select, move these up. Um, we might as well do a little bit of fixing up already. So, And I'm being careful to keep the topology changes in the center so that they line up for the purposes of dragging, like so. And we can adjust that all later. Um, it's good enough for the moment. We can take this stuff in towards the body so that it looks a little bit more bulky. There we go. So now we have a fairly decent first uh, impression of the backpack. Let's go ahead and start to work on the chest because we've got this complicated set of shoulder stuff going on. And that's why we needed this topology and this extra line here. 
Um, so basically what we want to do is we want to give the impression that the helmet is very strongly supported. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over into face mode and I'm going to go ahead and extrude uh, these here and then scale them down and move them like this. I really hope you can hear that beeping. Uh, it's actually illegal to do construction this late at night, but that's okay. They don't mind something like that. Uh, and you can see that that gives us a little bit of a, uh, um, a support structure. Pull these in to give it a little bit of, there we are. And we have a lot of options as for how to deal with the shoulder, but basically we've got so many polygons in this area that I don't really feel any need to extrude. Instead all I'm going to do is um, move these such that they look like an edge, like so. I moved it the wrong way. <laughs> now, I could extrude because we don't have that many in this direction, but we'll live with it. There, that'll, that'll do for the moment. Um, now there's tons and tons of detail work that we could do here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, extrude here to give us a little bit of a uh, torso control unit sort of thing. There we are. Um, we can start to work on the hips, we can start to work on the helmet a little bit more earnestly. Let's go ahead and fix the shape of the helmet. You can see that it's quite awkward. Alright, so you can see that this is what it looks like right now. And if we wanted to, we could smooth it out. And that was that is how it would look like if we didn't ever have any normals. We're going to be calculating all of our normals in Unity, so it doesn't really matter. Um, we could do that if we really wanted to get a good image. Uh, we could painstakingly do it with each type. Um, so right now our helmet's kind of wide. Let's go ahead and bring in these edges. I don't like this one. This one vertex is not good. That's OK, though. We'll find some place that it goes without looking too awful. All right. So one of the things that this helmet has um, that we haven't covered is it's got a uh, plate on the back and on the front that partially hide the face and the back of the head. So let's go ahead and add in some extrusions you can see here. Let's go ahead and add in a little bit of extrusion to get that, and that's why I left this, because it's uh, just right. Extrude out, and then we're going to go ahead and move up. Oh, dir. Um, uh, it's supposed to be transparent, so it's actually a little bit difficult to see what I'm doing, but I'm actually going to extrude in like this. Um, and it's okay to have this kind of, I think it actually doesn't look too bad. So let's go ahead and take these surfaces up here now. Uh, this is going to be a little bit difficult to select. There we go. Nope, I missed one. And extrude them up a little bit and then scale them down. And these it's really hard to see what I'm doing. Sorry. 
concave meshes are a pain in the ass. Why do I still have this open? You, go away. I could use the extra screen space. There we go. And then the back plate, we're going to go ahead and adjust the way that the backpack adjusts, uh, uh, attaches, such that we can use the back plate to, um, we can create the back plate out of the backpack, and they both kind of gel together like they're one unit. And you can notice that uh, I am creating a lot of surfaces which are parallel to other surfaces. And normally, that would be kind of silly because you would never get to see those interior surfaces. But the helmet will be UV mapped to transparent, so you will actually get to see these surfaces. Um, so they should exist. And there they do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and like so. Yep, everything looks decent. Let's go ahead and pull this out. There we go. Um, so let's adjust this. There we are. And we can adjust it here. All right. So we can sit here and adjust all day long, but I wanted to show you how this sort of quick modeling can work. Um, and I mean, you've sat through literally all of the modeling I did, and it was two episodes, and I mean, they might have been slightly long, but we've got this pretty detailed model left, and I mean, I can, I could put this in the game as is, and nobody would whine. Um, obviously, there's plenty of details left, like these boots, which are totally undetailed, and we wanted to add in an actual connection here, and a whole bunch of other stuff, uh, and of course, it's unrigged, but all of that is uh, just a little bit more work. In in just two episodes we've created someone with full hands and uh, backpacks and some surface detail. Uh, we've basically modeled out a complicated character in half an hour. So I hope you enjoyed that and if not I'm sorry. Uh, we'll probably not I will probably not cover doing bone uh, adding in the bones and weighting them um, because I already covered that before when I created the mech and it's no different. Uh, so this is probably the last you'll see of this particular character until I put her in the game.